Welcome back, everybody. Day four of Hi-Fi Summit. We've got SVS in the house. We've got the Larry and a Nick. Uh, <laughs> a Nick. <laughs> a Nick. How, are you guys, wow. how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Man, We're doing great. Leave, great. leave after that uh, intro, Jonna. Uh, yeah. I think Nick's got a new nickname, so uh, I like great. A Nick. <laughs> a Nick. That's wow. too much. That's too much. How are you guys doing? What's what's going on uh, in where where you, uh, Youngstown? Is that where we're at? Where you guys are at? Yeah. So uh, SBS is based in Youngstown, Ohio, and actually one of the uh, fastest growing businesses in Youngstown, Ohio. I might add, which you know, we talk about the competition, but that's okay. We're mm -hmm. still uh, up and coming. We're trying to bring a lot of uh, you know jobs and fun to Ohio. But actually, Larry is in uh, the uh, Dallas Fort Worth area, and I am ah. in uh, picturesque uh, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, right near Newport. So. We are virtual and virtual, uh, you know, away from Ohio as well. But we're doing just phenomenally, and and I can't speak for Larry, but Larry, how you doing? I'm I'm doing pretty good too, man. We're uh, finally seeing fall, so it's nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. I smoked a turkey today, Larry. When me and Larry oh, are big into wow. like you know making meat, so yeah, right. I was practicing because I got you know a couple people coming over on Thanksgiving, so nice. trying to get the uh, practice bird in. Right, nice. right. You got to get that practice in. You don't want it to like, you don't want it to be like one of those that rubber national turkey. lampoons Thanksgivings, right? No, <laughs> you don't, don't want to that. that down. <laughs> That's funny. I, that I had to learn how turkey. to like carve a turkey, um, you know, when we moved up here, because my wife really likes Thanksgiving and I'm just like, oh my gosh, how do I do this thing? <laughs> you know, so. Hey, well, for, all, for Ian, who asked, it's a pit boss uh, smoker. It's one of those wood pellet smokers. So I'm not like mm. quite into the uh, like hardcore game, like doing it with my own big chunks of wood, but it certainly makes it easy. And I used apple wood and I used actually a, uh, a rub that Larry, you recommended the meat church, honey, uh, whatever that honey one was. And honey so, hog. There you go. Nice. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All, sorts of, all. all sorts of plugs out here. Y'all get I love how the, the conversation starting <laughs> too. Start Talking about smoke. You know why it is, folks, is because they do their uh, a regular thing. How often do you guys do it? Every week? Mm -hmm. uh, every two to three weeks. Usually every, every two, two weeks. Sometimes we go three weeks. Yeah, where you have a, a, a live stream. And so pretty much you've covered a lot of things in, in all of those. So now we're down to uh, we're turkeys, know, smoking man. turkeys. Yeah, we're talking <laughs> food. We got we got plenty of audio to talk about too, but you know, you know, I figured awesome. we're uh, getting into that time of the year, and I see Larry's got his festive T-shirt on, so you know, why not have a little seasonal talk? Yeah, very cool, man. The lake shirt today, so there it is. So what do we? So what else do you want to talk about? Can you? <laughs> so actually, you know, I thought it would be interesting. We uh, we brought some, you know, we did some videos uh, to you know be a part of this event, and I think there's been a lot of. Uh, you know, talk about SVS, whereas known as a subwoofer company, and, and certainly we started for the first, I don't know, 10 years of our existence building these big cylinder subwoofers and these sort of dual port or, you know, multiple uh, driver uh, behemoths uh, built in a garage in Youngstown, Ohio. So really sort of starting off as a, uh, you know, mom and pop almost type shop, um, trying to bring a level of performance for the price that just wasn't existent in the marketplace at the time. Um, and this, you know, for this show, we've actually evolved quite a bit um, from now until then. Uh, we have wireless audio products, we have accessories, and we have, uh, uh, you know, height effect speakers. So we've really sort of tried to expand, you know, from our subwoofer game into a more full-fledged audio brand. Um, and that's kind of what we wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about today. We have some big new products coming out at the beginning of next year, which if you know us, we don't tease, we don't give you little hints or secrets, but... SVS is going to hit strong at the beginning of 2021. Um, so oh. I will say that much. But, uh, you know, for the I'm time excited. being, we have some, some great products that are uh, available now and, and that are, you know, getting a, lot of, uh, getting a lot of momentum. So I thought maybe the sound base, Larry, you could give a little teaser overview about what that is. And if you guys have questions or have had experiences with it, um, you know, we could say, oh, well, look at that. Man, come yeah. prepared. Still have one. I didn't know we were going to talk right about sound base off the bat, but. Uh, you know, like we are known it. for subs. We are known for speakers. Um, but uh, about two years ago, we introduced our first foray into multi-room audio. And we introduced two products. One was called the Prime Wireless Sound Base, uh, which is what I have right here in my hand. It is a two-channel, 300-watt, Class D digital amplifier that does Bluetooth, that does optical, it does analog. Uh, it's got a headphone jack here on the front, can even connect to your network to do streaming 
in high resolution 24192 flac files with a great DAC that's inside here. Uh, you use the new DTS PlayFi app, so it operates very similarly to other multi-room audio products that are out there. Difference being, you can mix brands. So with SVS, we have the sound base, and we have another product called the Prime Wireless Speakers, which is a two-channel pair of speakers that do a lot of the same functionality as the amplifier, but they're their own ecosystem with their own speakers. This, you just hook up your own speakers or in wall, in ceiling, or you can use it as a streamer with the uh, left and right, if I can point correctly here, left and right analog outputs to go to an existing legacy system to bring it on your network. But you can put them all over your house and it operates very much like the other multi-room products. But like in here, my arcade over here behind me, this is where that amplifier normally is. And then behind me is a 5.1.2 system that's powered by a, a basic Ankyo receiver. And they talk via the DTS PlayFi app. And I have a set of speakers in the bedroom, a set of speakers in my kid's room, and a set of speakers downstairs, along with the pair that's here on my desk. And they all talk to each other via the PlayFi app, and we can do multi-room streaming or everybody listen to their own thing. Uh, and it's all powered via your network and can be either off the sound base amplifier or our prime wireless speakers. But I think that's a powerful little to app, too. It is. Yeah, I'm right there. I've, I've used that. That thing is has some power. What is the rating on it? Uh, it's 150 watts by two class D. So 300 watt total power. Uh, I've hooked them up to bookshelves, satellites. Uh, here they're on my prime bookshelves on top of the arc. Uh, we've used them at shows with our ultra towers. So right. they can really power anything in our lineup and almost anything you're going to come across out there on the market. Yeah, it's got subwoofer output. And, you know, I think it was important for us, both with the uh, sound base and the prime wireless speaker system to have, uh, you know, the full 192 kilohertz, 24 bit DAC, but then also Wi-Fi, the ability to stream, you know, title, Amazon Music HD, Cobuzz at that ultra high resolution. You know, we wanted to create a fidelity first wireless audio solution, both with the speakers and with the sound base. And then obviously still have all that convenience of, you know, app control, multi-room and, uh, you know, being able to work with different brands. But when you want to stream wirelessly, you don't have to compromise on the fidelity. So that was an important point that uh, we really tried to work in here, both with the DAC, but also the DTS PlayFi app, which allows what's called critical listening mode. And that's essentially streaming at that ultra uh, high resolution fidelity, 192 kilohertz, 24 bits. So, um, you know, I, I think for somebody who's truly looking for that modern audio file, that modern hi-fi experience without, you know, really any compromises, uh, it's really a, a good solution for that type of person. What's yeah. the, and the it's, price it's, on that? Uh, the sound base is four ninety nine ninety nine, and then the uh, prime wireless speaker system, which is a pair of speakers. And I don't want to discount that because if you have listened to like a soundbar that claims to be stereo and even some of those like really cheap little Bluetooth speakers claim to be stereo. It's not the same as if you have two separate speakers providing that real stereo image. And if you've listened to enough two channel systems, it kind of hits you. You kind of just get it when you hear it. But anything that sort of promises to be stereo and it's just like a little dinky sort of Bluetooth, um, I would argue that's not the same experience. Uh, so it was important for us to have two speakers so you could get that rock solid image with all the uh, you know other features that we mentioned as well. And that, so, the speaker here is five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. Thank you. So when you say like stereo, not really being stereo, that's like what we have here on our phones, right? Because this is this this is stereo, right? That's oh what yeah. They, that's what they tell us. They, that's what they tell us. Nothing but, like I that. Mean, uh, that's Atmos, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's Atmos. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Look well, out. there are phones that have Atmos, but the only way you get it is if you toss it up in the air whenever you're wow. watching something. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. You you toss it up. Oh my gosh. There it Spin is. it around yep. a couple times. There it is. It's above my head. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I totally get what you're saying with the uh, the you got You got to have stereo spread. You got to have the speakers, the sound coming at you from, uh, you know, maybe like five feet in between six feet, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's that uh, equidistant triangle. If you're in the yeah. true audiophile mode where it's, you know, perfect triangle between your, your listening area and your two speakers. Uh, but they're pretty forgiving. They have great dispersion characteristics. And, uh, you know, I think the, because the tweeters uh, outside the driver, it, it sort of provides a wider sound field as well. Um, so, I mean, there's got some advantages where you don't have to have that perfect equidistant triangle. But, uh, you know, it, it does make a difference. And I think when people hear it, they actually get it. But, uh, you know, I, I, there's just the popular notion now is to have a single speaker that promises to do stereo. But there is a difference, I would argue. 
Yeah. And if you look at the category, there, there's powered bookshelves that are out there from other manufacturers, and they're typically a Bluetooth speaker and maybe have an optical or a line in. This, uh, whether it's the sound base amplifier or the speakers, not only are they a, a stereo powered product, but they have optical connections, analog connections, left and right output on the amplifier to go to a legacy product, uh, full range subwoofer out on the sound base, a active subwoofer output on the prime wireless speakers. And then I can do multi-room streaming. Uh, you can do your Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, Kobas, all that. And instead of being Bluetooth, it does 24192 high res flack via your network, either wired or wireless, which you are not getting on really anything else in this category. Um, the other thing you can do like today, Sunday, and, and if you had people over when you could uh, say the Super Bowl was on, you could run an optical input from your cable or satellite box or game system, whatever, and then broadcast that to every other PlayFi capable product in your home and really have a full on party utilizing every single piece of equipment in your house. So it, it's really very different, uh, both the sound base and the prime wireless speakers from anything else in the category. Yep. And I did see a question about, uh, does it have a wireless subwoofer signal? And the answer is that it has a subwoofer connection. So you could hook up uh, what, you know any solution, but we have a, what's called the SoundPath subwoofer, wireless subwoofer adapter. And uh, that actually can send a full range wireless signal. So you could connect that adapter to the sound base and get a wireless subwoofer signal, get rid of that cable clutter, uh, or even use it for like a you know pair of uh, powered surround sound speakers uh, because it is full range or you know power a different component separate from your uh, your AV receiver. So uh, there are options if you want to create a wireless subwoofer connection from that prime wireless sound base. <laughs> get some props on the t-shirt represent man yeah i think the uh the blue tuxedo mm. shirt i wore a few weeks ago went over the best so yeah <laughs> i have to bring that one back <laughs> so well, what else did we miss on so that? we well, had a, a speaker uh the other day a seminar and you know a lot of people recommend uh at least uh two subs and he said three you should go with three what do you guys think about that well, I, Three, I, four, no. seven. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Bottom whatever, line, whatever right. no. yeah. I mean, uh, Larry, I'll, I'll let you take it from the more. Nick, Nick is like, we have plenty to choose from. I and mean, we only have different thirteen shapes, different models. sizes. Yeah, yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll send a pallet, right? Just a pallet <laughs> of subs if they want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I know the conversation you're talking about. And there's, you know, there's all kinds of different opinions that you know, creating the triangle. Um, which is what some people like to do, mm -hmm. some brands talk about. Yeah. Uh, it really just comes down to what you can fit in your room, what you're capable of doing, what you like, what you can sometimes afford. Um, we're proponents of two or more. You know, If you can only fit one, put it in the best spot. Mm -hmm. But if you can do two, absolutely, let's get yeah. two and make yourself a, give you more headroom, give you more volume, give you more low frequency, uh, better sitting area, all of that. Um, yeah, I don't have yeah. duels anywhere in my house. Um, they're all single driver systems in each room of the house that we have a theater in. But uh, once you get them tuned right and in the right spot, they can take on a lot of space. But if you can do two, do two. Uh, aside Three, from, four. aside from, of course, having the subs pointed directly at each other, which of course is not good. Um, is there such thing as too many? Let's say if I had like one in each corner or something like that. Was is there going to be issues at a, after a certain point? I would. I mean, I would say there's just a diminishing return. I mean, for one, you're going to be paying for output you're never going to use. You know, if you have so much headroom where like the only way you're ever going to dial it up even past 25 percent, you're like making your ears bleed. It's like, why spend that much money? Go with the right amount of bass to like your listening preferences. You know, you can still hit that reference volume you can still make your room shake, you know, get punched in the chest, have all that fun of, of having, you know, kick ass bass. But like it's not as much uh, just extra headroom that you're never going to get to. So uh, we, we try to walk people through the process of finding the right subwoofers that match for your speakers, for your listening preferences, and for your room. It's sort of those three things. And budget is obviously a part of that as well. But those four factors are really what's going to determine, uh, you know, the right amount of bass for you or the right you know, pair or four or six subwoofers that uh, will fit your room and your listening taste. So, um, you know, I, I think there's a, a certain formula there, but it's not always exact science because some people do like to listen at that beyond ear splitting level. And some people like to have it a little bit more refined. So it really just comes down to a lot of, uh, you know, different variables like that. Yeah. Like this guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which one? 
This so guy right you. here. It was that guy. Oh, that whatever, guy. man. Ears splitting. Why do, why do you want to blame it's Almost you? like cheek splitting, right? It's just shaking everything. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Martin, cheek splitting. Three subs would not be unbalanced. <laughs> it finally registers. I mean, what about this guy? I mean, this is a little extreme. <laughs> <here. Whoa. laughs> oh, so, man. That's hilarious. More cowbell, dude. He's, he's got me beat. <laughs> uh, so, Martin, I'm sure you guys, I know the answer to this, but... Maybe you guys can can talk about this. Why three subs might not be unbalanced? I, once you get it tuned right, and you know, do your your phase and uh, any other adjustments you need to make, you'll they they would not be unbalanced. They can um, play very nicely. Yeah, and I, there's there's one brand that really talks up three, and um, it's it's a a story that you can tell. You can do three if you'd like. I think most people tend to go in singles or pairs or add by two from there uh four corners of your room you end up probably having your subs a little lower than you normally would like nick was saying the diminishing returns because it will get to where it's too overpowering if the room's not the right size or if you go too big um so i think a lot of it comes down to getting the right subs for your room getting them tuned right yeah and then uh making sure your crossovers and phase and stuff are correct too and yeah. and once you have that all set shouldn't it kind of operate as one big sub almost okay. like almost as one unit yeah, if you can pinpoint where the bass is coming from, then you don't have it tuned right. And yeah. I think is, I I kind of enjoy going. Oh heck, there's yeah, there it is. Um, but that's just because I'm being kind of stupid when I'm trying new movies at home and stuff. But you know, if I'm listening to my system and just trying to enjoy it, I don't want to know where the subwoofer is. I want the entire room yeah. to feel like it's being part of that. Yeah, when thing- it comes down to it. it- supposed to sound like the bass is coming from each individual speaker or each different part of your surround sound system um and if you have a uh, you know two channel system even just permeating the entire room you don't want to be able to localize like uh like larry was saying but whether it, you know anytime you go above one subwoofer all of that just sort of gets decreased it becomes much more forgiving placement gets much more forgiving you know that localization sort of starts to go away regardless of where the placement of the duels or the triple subwoofers are so it just sort of ease like sort of negates a lot of the issues you get from having a single subwoofer and that's a lot of reasons why we recommend you know two smaller subwoofers versus one larger one if you have that option um you know in your listening room and is it is it good to have them all be the same is it better in an ideal scenario they're all the same you know i will say you can certainly blend ported with ported cabinet and sealed with sealed cabinet if you start mixing ported cabinet and sealed cabinet you'll get phase issues and that's when the base is sort of misaligned. And then you're just going to get sort of an inaccurate, unconvincing experience. It'll still sound loud and boomy, but it's just not going to be as crisp and clean. And the base isn't going to blend together as well with mm-hmm. the speakers and provide that sort of seamless experience, you know, of, uh, of surround sound or, you know, whatever you're listening to. Yeah. What What if they were like different sizes of like woofer, like a 10 and a 13, like what you guys have? Like, is it OK to do that or is it preferable to just go with one size? It is always preferable to match them in terms of driver size and amplifier power. But if they're close to the same, like I wouldn't mix one of our SB 1000s with like an SB 16 Ultra, like our yeah, yeah, you know yeah. modest with our biggest and flagship. Yeah. Um, but you can certainly mix the 1000 and the 2000 Pro. Or, um, you know, if the drivers are re- relatively close to size, uh, then then a lot of that will blend together fine. We just really strongly recommend against sealed with ported. Um, but okay. again, if it's sealed, sealed, ported, ported, you're generally going to be okay blending them together, especially with the app and some of the features that you now have at your disposal. Yeah. And if you start mixing brands, that's where you start getting one that might be more powerful. And, you know, there's amp ratings from manufacturers out there that say, they're, you know, it's a thousand watt amplifier. And, you yeah. know, that number does kind of jump out a lot of people. But you know, if you start mixing brand A with brand B and they have completely different philosophies, even though they're both sealed, uh, one may overpower the other and you may not even notice the other one. All right. And the SVS one will just be better, right? I, you said that, but uh, <laughs> we're not going to argue. Yeah, we're not going to. Uh, no, no clickbait headlines or nothing. Uh, I'm sure you guys have answered this many times, but let's say for somebody who listens to music 50% of the time and, and home theater 50% of the time, and they're trying to choose between uh, one ported versus two two sealed for whatever for, a, yeah. for whatever reason. Well, probably could um, do due, due to space because the ported ones are a lot bigger. So right, because that's yeah. actually kind of kind of often is uh, two sealed versus one ported. 
in the in the same line, same series, same same series. Yeah. Side. yeah. What do y'all What do y'all? Sometimes think it's, it's sometimes it's two sealed in a lower series versus uh, one ported. Yeah. And yeah. Another they're looking series, at cost so. Yeah, we get that a lot. Yeah. And you know, I I probably typically recommend going dual just because of the stuff we talked about earlier with the better headroom, more volume, benefits, uh, more capabilities, room blending, all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, another perk though of our ported subs, anything from the 2000 Pro and above, uh, you have the port tuning capability within our app. So you can get inside the app and you contact us and we'll send them to you for free, these foam port plugs that you can plug any of the ports on a 2000 Pro and above and turn one of our ported subs into a sealed sub. And then you can utilize the app to also save presets. So if you have somebody that, uh, you know, in our living, we don't listen to a lot of music downstairs and here I do, but I do sealed subs in here. But if I had a ported sub in here, um, what I could do is I could save my listening preferences for when I'm watching movies, when the subwoofer is totally open and save a preset within our app. And that could be my movie preset. And then I could save a music preset where I'll open up my app here. Nobody send me any texts or nothing. (laughs) <laughs> but I could get in here and, uh, sorry, I updated my app. And there we go. So I could go in here to port tuning, and you're never going to see this, so I apologize for trying to do this over here. But I can go into port tuning here, Wings and up. I can actually change from ported to sealed. And you can see that it shows that those ports are plugged. Well, now I've just taken a larger cabinet ported subwoofer, and I have it operating like a sealed subwoofer. So I would then save that preset for maybe music listening and all i would have to do is just remember to get up and put the port plugs in and out and i see my wife just sent me a text so good try babe Uh, (laughs) uh, (laughs) so so you can actually have it operate as sealed or ported and uh, there's not really a lot of product out there that does that and so i see kang is asking a question here what it does is it completely changes the dsp operation of the amplifier it's not just plugging uh the ports it's literally changing the way the signal path is recognized and um, adjusted so it's really making it a couple different subwoofers and so if you have any of our newer models the 2000 pro and above any of the ported models can operate as three separate subs a completely open ported subwoofer for that deep huge thunderous over the top imax level base you can do extended mode where you plug one of the ports and it kind of takes care of nulls and uh variances in sound based on your room or if you have kind of an overabundance of bass and then the third mode would be sealed where you plug it all up and it operates as a sealed sub but it it's a larger sealed cabinet sub so there is a little more volume to it yeah, and it's funny we've had people reach out to us before it's like i have a ported sub for it's not an svs brand but i want to know if i like stuff socks or stuff the animal in the ports is it going to actually make it more like a sealed sub for and kind of but it's not changing the tuning frequency so we have three unique tuning frequencies when you run into three different, you know, ported sealed or uh, partial mode. And uh, it actually, like Larry was saying, provides three different subwoofers in terms of the sound quality, but they're all tuned to that specific frequency with having the port plug. So uh, it's a little bit different than, you know, stuffing a pair of socks in there as, uh, as some people might find out. Is there any truth to what people are saying? You know, if you, if you want something for music, go with a sealed because the bass is tighter. Uh, any truth to that? Not really. It's, it's kind of a personal preference and also depends on the music you're listening to. You know, if you're listening to EDM, it's not typically super tight, quick bass. It's normally longer bass notes or the thumps. Uh, if you're doing rock, it's normally bass from a guitar or a snare drum. Now, if you're doing something that's a classical tune or um, jazz or R&B, that is more of a quicker, more repetitious bass. So that's where somebody may prefer the sound of a sealed sub, but uh, play with them, kind of figure out which one you like. Um, I tend to do sealed subs in the house just because they're smaller, but we do have a cylindrical sub downstairs in the living room uh, because it's uh, able to be- Smaller footprint. Yeah, Yeah, smaller footprint, but being ported because we have an open concept living room, uh, it shakes the whole house at much lower volumes than the sealed subs do throughout the rest of the house. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say, you know, with sealed cabinet subwoofers, it really comes down to the transient speed. Like, that is one of the big gains you get over a ported subwoofer. And with that quickness, that musicality, uh, you're trading off a little bit of low-frequency extension, a little bit of output that you would get with a ported subwoofer. But, of course, you're also getting a subwoofer that's about twice the size when you're using a ported subwoofer. So, um, you know, that's where it's 
often you know people make that uh that jump to say that a sealed is better for music because it's snappier it's punchier it hits you much quicker and it can play the notes you know much more accurately but again you're trading off a little bit of that you know massive output and just the deep bass extension that you get with a ported yeah and I, I see the question there about the port plugs we don't include them in the boxes anymore because a lot of people that really weren't using them so if oh, any of you have purchased any of the subs that uh, need the port plugs you just simply contact us via email chat phone whatever and we'll just send them to you for free yeah uh, but you need to have a model that's a 2000 pro through a 16 ultra with the subwoofer control app so that you can make those adjustments and i did see somebody ask what do i have at home i have an sb 1000 in my listening room behind me which is uh paired with a pair of prime wireless uh powered speakers and then upstairs i have an sb 3000 that's paired with a pair of prime pinnacles so i have two two channel systems and i'm in the process of switching out to a new surround system with uh, some new gear so uh that will be uh, in place soon but uh sb1000 sb3000 again not a huge house on here so uh that's that's kind of what uh was the biggest factor in, in choosing those models key advantages hmm. you, i'll let you start and we'll <laughs> camera through to me so there, let's oh, go back so, right so i mean this isn't necessary i'm not trying to call out any competition but i think our recipe for designing subwoofers really comes down to five different factors and uh you know there's a, a notion out there with i guess more so with base heads than maybe with manufacturers that uh subwoofers are more of like a tractor pull it's like how deep can you go and how loud can you play and it's like that's what matters when you're buying a subwoofer and you know if you can go the loudest and you can play the lowest and that's the best subwoofer you know out there and certainly that is one in one a in terms of what we look for when we're designing subwoofers it needs to hit below that level of audibility 20 hertz and below which is bass that you can feel sound that you can actually feel in your chest and you know shake your pant legs a little bit um <laughs> and then obviously we need output you need to be able to play it at any volume you want and have it sound clear distortion free and keep up with your speakers you know when you're getting those moments that really call for that, you know, just jarring bass experience. But as I mentioned before, transient speed, incredibly important. If you're having, if you have a subwoofer that can't keep up with your speakers, you're going to have this sort of blurred, uh, muddy, you know, what are the other words? Slow, uh, sloppy, boomy, slow, sloppy. Like that's the sound loose. that you sort of get. Nobody wants a loose subwoofer. <laughs> <laughs> Not touching that. <laughs> True. Did Don't you... want a loose subwoofer. Oh, um, <laughs> and so I, I think it can be a distracting experience when when it can't keep up with you know your uh, your full range speakers or you know even uh, bookshelves or satellites whatever you're running, and then uh, beyond that it's uh, accuracy and frequency response. It's like it's not just playing the notes uh, that you expect, but it's playing them uh, at the right volume and with the right tempo, like to keep up with this, the uh, the actual speakers and the content, you know whatever source material you're playing. Right. It has to not only play you know tonally accurate, but you know with the time alignment. And all those factors, it has to just perfectly blend in with your speakers, like I was saying earlier, and make it sound like the bass is coming from all the speakers at once. And uh, Larry, what did I leave out? Did I leave something out? Well, uh, I think part of it was also, you know, how we differ from everybody else too. So that that's our philosophy on subs, but we really focus on you all. You know, we are a very much customer centric brand, uh, whether it's the way we interact with you guys on social media, do stuff like this with uh, these guys here uh our warranty on our subwoofers and speakers which goes above and beyond really anything else that's out there our sound experts service team that are there you know regular hours and it's real people uh, taking care of people for you know we have people that call in that have you know, 20 year old subs and we find a way to help them out uh to take care of them um you know the things that we're doing with creating new product we don't just slap a new color on it and say hey it's new it's completely from the ground up. Like when we went from the 2000 series to the 2000 Pro, yes, they look similar in regards to the cabinet, uh, but that's it. The driver's different. The amplifier's different. It added more features. Uh, same thing coming down the road with uh, some of the other stuff that uh, you know we have coming down a pipe. It's not just a new finish or taking something away to uh, hit a price point. Like, that's not what we do. Yeah, and we're, we're not going to be a brand that's going to launch, you know, five, ten new products a year. You know, we're going to have two to three to four, um, but we're going to try to make them, you know, best bang for the buck or best in class, whatever it is that we can do to make that product stand out. It's not going to be just a rebadge of an existing product. So um, that's a little bit, you know, sort of why we, it takes us longer, why we don't have as many product launches. 
Um, but we support them for a long time. We don't want people to have that sort of regret where they, you know, they get a product and then two months later, here's a new version. And it's like, well, you know, why did I bother? Um, so it, it's, it's a philosophy that we have to try to just create, you know, legacy products that are truly going to have a legacy. And also, and guys, uh, a few people here said the app that you have, the DSP, uh, really nice gloss paint. And, uh, you know, your speakers could possibly uh, survive a storage fire when none of the others <laughs> don't. video evidence. You know, things like that. Um, I would say, um, you know, somebody here is asking about Servo. And I would expect, I would suspect that what you'd say is, you know, on your Ultra, you have a huge voice coil to kind of uh, do the work of that, right? Yeah, the, the 16 Ultra has an 8-inch voice coil, and you really don't see that in really much anything that's out there. So it can handle anything you're going to throw at it. Power, volume, all that. Yeah, the Bill of Rights, I see somebody bringing up there. You know, we, we protect you. Yeah. And uh, even like our retail partners, we're very selective with where our stuff is on display. It's not just in every retail store across the country. We, we want you to be able to walk in and talk with somebody that uh, hopefully I or my counterpart, Doug, who is our field training manager, um, we've interacted with and taught them about our brand or have gone through one of my virtual trainings. And that way that they can deliver that information to you. Same thing when we share information with uh, these guys here on YouTube, they get all the same info so that they can educate all of you as well. And we wanna make sure that you understand who we are, why we do what we do, and then be there for you. Yeah. And Nick, can... Nick, I just saw your head nod when this comment came up. So I'm uh, just taking some notes here. Put them on the spot. Or... <laughs> I was probably he was nodding, nodding at something Larry totally said. different. I, don't think he was not, he was not I knew it. Any conclusions. I knew it. So, I knew it. Uh, I, you know, yeah. the one, the, the other thing I, I, I like about you guys is you have like your little trade-in upgrade yeah. situation because you know, you're you're like you're like little base dealers. You know, you get them with the five hundred dollars subwoofer, and then they're like, oh. You want what to upgrade? Spend more. Kind of hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that's always nice too, because like, I mean, I I can sell anything on eBay real quick, but a lot of people don't want to deal with that, or like mm -hmm. find somebody to give this to, or let me try to sell it to my neighbor or whatever. Yeah. Like, I want to get you know the two thousand pro now. I need to you know um, liquidate this thing. So I I think that's another huge um, service that you guys offer. And, and I mean, look at us. We we all know the temptations of upgrade itis. You know, yep. it's like, especially in this hi-fi, you know, world of audio, it's like, you know, you're always making tweaks. You're always thinking, like, can I get a little bit more out? And there is often a time when you get to the point where, like, this is good enough for me. This is awesome. Like, I got everything I need. It's perfect. But there's a lot of people out there who just, you know, incrementally want to work their way up and get a little bit better. So we want to take care of people and, and put it in, uh, in, in a way that's easy for them and uh, kind of charts the path out so they don't have any sort of regret about choosing SVS. And I think that's what that's sort of about. And just to go back to what Larry was saying too, and what you guys were saying, you know, I have to show, I throw a shout out to uh, my boss, Gary Yakubian, because he is one of those, uh, you know, business leaders who does lead by example. Like he puts himself on the front line. And there's not a lot of CEOs and, you know, look outside the audio industry even who are willing to have their email on the contact us page or on our bill of rights page and say, Hey, you have the problem, reach out to me directly. And he will respond to you. Like, don't, you know, get that mistaken. So, you know, I think it starts from the top with SVS and he's bred a culture of, you know, one accountability, but two, like we all just love this stuff. Like we're just into it. So, you know, all of those things sort of play off each other and uh, it's fun coming to work when you do that. And, uh, you know, I think that permeates sort of outside of yeah. uh, our, our own little SVS family. I, I know, man, I, I love working on a review of subwoofers because that just means... <laughs> I get to watch movies up, all day in the living room and my wife comes out of the, the master bedroom. Are you done yet? Why yeah. is it so loud? Yeah. What's going on? It's How funny. many movies are you going to watch? Yeah. Is this work? How does this work? <laughs> I was talking to a, re a reviewer one time and he's like, you know what? I just despise AV receiver reviews so much because there's so much involved. But like, give there me a subwoofer. Not. Let me just plug it in, get it in the right place and crank it. And like, that's a review I can get behind. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that's, it's funny how that works. The more Put features a subwoofer in a car, more... right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah some right. Silly stuff with it. <laughs> Show the excursion. I put mean, it, put pretty... it up on the ceiling or something. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy. And, you know, another thing is uh, your happy hours, right? The fact that you're so quick to adapt. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just a perfect example yeah. of that yeah. is, Definitely. you know, things changed and you're so quick to 
you I think you're one of the first ones to like, all right, let's just start doing these happy hours. I think so. Right. So, some folks are still thinking about maybe they should do it, you know, other companies. So as a company, I find that you guys are very quick to adapt to new things. And I think that says a lot about, you know, why somebody would want to invest in SVS products, right? If you want a company that, you know, where they're quick to adapt. And also, you know, I think people like the giveaways. You guys are also doing giveaway here, right? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. You guys are doing a, a PB2000 Pro and a Prime Wireless Speaker System. And I saw on your Instagram somebody commented, hey, I can't get into this uh, giveaway. Uh, the giveaways will be open after the, the event is over, right? So it'll be open to everyone. You'll be able to do that. that. So Look, it's not. We'll make sure we respond to that one. Let them know to uh, to get in there and enter. Cool. I, I let them know also. But yeah, cool. uh, for the attendees, you can actually access it right now. Just get that done. It's on the yeah. Q4 giveaways on the HiFi Summit. So here it is. Here's the challenge from Leland. Convince me. I'm currently in the market to buy a new dual sub. It's down to USVS and the Rel HT1508. Why should I buy SVS? Ooh. Ooh. Put them on the spot for five bucks. Let's go. Let's go. So I so I know that product pretty well because uh it's it's in rooms where ours are. Um so I'll give you uh, a couple of thought processes. If you're looking at you know two of those, um I'd say our are three thousand or even two thousand pro would be a very comparative model in regards to frequency, volume, output, capability, but where you're going to differ will be the capabilities with the subwoofer control app, the balancing capabilities, the presets, um, the, God, I can go on and on. You just look at the app. <laughs> uh, so let's just look at the app in particular. You know, I can do variable phase control by point. So if you're going to be doing multiple subs, sometimes phase control can be a bit of an issue. And most every subwoofer on the market, it's either zero or 180 for phase control. So if you have something where your subwoofer has to go kind of off put off the wall, maybe a quarter way up on one side and a third way up on the other, well, you can't just do zero or 180 there. It wouldn't match up right. So I don't want to get too terribly geeky, but, you know, having zero to 180 degree phase control in one increment. So I can do one that's 33 degrees, one that's 45 degrees um, or 62, whatever. Um, then you get into parametric EQs and base management and, uh, you can even change your slope on the bay. All these things that most people probably don't even think about or care about, but it's in our app. And if you don't understand what I just said, inside the app, there's actually a tutorial that walks you through what each feature set is. And if that still doesn't help you, uh, you can contact our service guys seven days a week and they'll literally walk you through setting it up on your receiver, doing single driver, doing double subs, whatever. Um, so for the cost of some of our competitive products that are out there, you can do two of ours, um, and come away with a lot more, or, you know, just do two of ours that are similar price points to what you're looking at and you'll really see, but where I think our products shine is whatever cost you're looking at. And most of our competitor subs, ours that will offer typically more will be half the price. And I'll, I'll add on to that too. I mean, it sounds like this person's probably considering a sealed cabinet subwoofer. And one of the things that we work really, really hard at is a frequency response curve that takes advantage of room gain. Mm -hmm. So when you place a sealed cabinet subwoofer in a room, you can actually amplify the uh, the output and get a little bit deeper base extension just based on how the frequency response curve and how it actually interacts with the room. And so I think, you know, the way that we actually uh, tune our subwoofers, our sealed cabinet subwoofers is meant to optimize. It's not just room gain which can actually be boomy you corner load your subwoofer a lot of times you get that rah, 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 and like yeah, it's a little boomy it's a little inaccurate but what we do is like acoustically tuned room gain so you're getting more output deeper bass extension but it's not that sort of boomy one note bass it's actually follows throughout the entire octave of that you know sort of lower hertz range um so i would argue that our subwoofers are specially sort of designed to really take advantage of room gain and give you more than what you would even expect given the cabinet size, given the driver, given the amplifier power. And so that's an advantage, not just over you know the brand mentioned, but any subwoofer who doesn't put that much attention to detail when it comes to uh, you know the frequency response. Yeah, and I there see that you is. is an engineer, so uh, you got what I was talking about there. But I, 
I personally, I think our SB3000 or PB3000 is really kind of a home run against yeah. most anything you're going to look at in the sub $2,000 range. Uh, and I saw somebody asking earlier about XLR on the 3000 series. Uh, that's part of the benefit of going to the model above the 4000. You get XLR, you get the front panel control, you get the IR capabilities as well, which is where you can really have some fun um, to get it into your system. And all of you guys asking for in walls. Uh, I think you've probably seen us or heard us tease um, a category of in-wall product that we will be announcing at the beginning of the year. It will not be speakers, but uh, you know we, we've talked about it enough on our um, happy hours that I think, Nick, you and I are probably comfortable enough saying, or maybe you're not, I'm going to be though, uh, we, we, we will be announcing uh, an in-wall subwoofer um, at the yeah, about the first. Actually, we have a we have a little breaking news when it comes to that. Not not that we're launching it, but uh, our lead engineer Smith Freeman has actually installed the very first SVS in wall subwoofer in his garage. There you so go. So currently, that is one of the applications where it's being tested, as well as you know the acoustic uh, nice. areas that we we do our testing as well. But we you know have put it in a real world environment because cool. that's a big part of our testing. We do both the anechoic chambers, we do all of these sort of scientific testing, but then we also put it in real world environments. And there is an actual in-wall SVS subwoofer out in the wild right now. So um, we'll report back soon. Yeah. Put that in yeah. your garage, man. That's rad. Well, it's funny. He's a climber and uh, he's built a climbing kit in his garage. And he said he's had to go by and already adjust some of the bolts on it. So and yeah. it will be a real SVS subwoofer experience. And I think that's where a lot of people tend to miss on in-walls. It's more mid-base. And that's not what we're shooting for here. This We want this to be right in line with everything else that we make. You want yeah. it to be cheek splitting. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we talked about. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we, we that'll be I, your, I didn't get much sleep last the Larry, night. Larry, that, so. that'll be the Sorry. new SPS uh, merch. Cheek splitting. <laughs> cheek splitting. Yeah. Cheek splitting. <laughs> there it is. So somebody asked the question if, uh, if the app with DSP, is that a good replacement for a mini DSP? You. you can do both. Um, I personally don't do anything with uh, mini DSP or um, microphones or any of that stuff because I've gotten to where I know how they should sound. I'm sure it could obviously get better if I took the time to do it, but um, I get my room kind of the way I want it. And, you know, like you guys do in reviews, I change my gear pretty frequently. So I tend to not do the mini DSPs and all that. But I sit down and I love what um, Odyssey offers. And then I just tweet out of it after. And uh, my my family hates it because I, you know, when you got a large family and a lot of dogs, you got to kick them out of the rooms for a while and it can get a little time consuming. So um, if you had the time and opportunity to do some mini DSP, you would just use it in conjunction with our app to do even more. Mm. And I think uh, each of you have done that in some reviews. I think it's uh, mini DSP is handy if you have multiple subs, right? Yeah. To, to to do a little bit of more tweaking with regards to that. I think yours is your app is very handy when it comes to if you're doing a two channel setup and you may not have a integrated app with anything as far as you know it might have a subwoofer output but that's it. Right? Yeah. And so and how how do you blend that to your speakers if the sub doesn't have the capability? And so that's what your app uh, allows. I think that's very useful. How how many uh, bands on your PEQ on on the app? I want to remember. I think it's three, right? Yeah. It's three. Yeah, I want to yeah. say three. three. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I don't play with the PEQ all that often in my house because I'm doing more music. But if you can see that, we have, I'm waiting on my wife to send another text. Um, we've got three parametric EQs. And whenever you're on the main page of the app, there's these presets. And you probably can't see that. But just pretend you can see that that says uh, music <laughs> movie custom and default. Right. And when you go into the music mode, it's just kind of flat and uh, not really implementing any curves. But whenever you go into our music preset, it automatically kicks in the parametric EQ for music because the curve of bass for music is very different than that of movies. And then you can get in there and adjust it however you choose. Uh, like when I'm in a retail store, and we go into a space that's very two-channel centric. Uh, there's a lot of guys that don't listen to subs on two-channel. I, you know, that's your prerogative, and it's cool, and that's kind of the way it's always been. But no matter the speakers you have, they're not as capable as a subwoofer when it comes to producing bass, in particular, most stuff under 40 hertz. So even adding an SB1000 to a pair of 
you know, speakers that can go down into, you know, the 40, 30 hertz range, it's going to change your experience. So I will actually save a preset. Uh, you guys all know them, the, the Diamond 803s from Bowers. That's where our 16 Ultra is partnered with almost every one of our retail stores. And I will save a preset for the blend, like you were talking about, Joe, with uh, that's properly blended with a 50 hertz blend with those speakers, the proper bass roll off and curve. And then I will save a preset to where it's, it's perfectly blended, volume matched, all that. And then I'll save one where it's off as opposed to a lot of people turning it off and on. And then you can hear how much bigger your sound experience gets, how much bigger your sound stage gets, how much more detail and emotion there is in what you're listening to. And it's a great experience. And then you never want to listen to music without a sub. Very that cool. app came in super handy when I was demoing your SB3000 at that one oh, event. Yeah, because yeah, I had it connected to some uh, uh, desktop speakers, right? The Vanity? And, yeah, so I had it sub out. And of course, that doesn't have any options as far as like how to tweak the sub. And so I had the sub in the corner. It was in this random hotel room. And so, of course, depending on the placement, sounds not going to be optimal. But I was able to get a, a, a U-Mic one, $99 calibrated mic. I used REW, free software. And I was able to kind of get an idea what, what it was doing within the room. And then it, gave, it said, these are the, the things that you need to do to fix it. And then I was able to just pop those into the EQ into the app and there it is corrected blended you know so you can do yeah. a lot with that that app that, that that after that show we were shaking the crap out of that whole hotel room with that with that yeah. sb3000 that was remember seeing the pictures then, on the wall you guys were filming yeah. it was uh, quite <laughs> an experience doing 18 hertz test tones right yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Uh, I do want to address this question, though, because it uh, we talked a lot about subwoofers, but this is actually referencing the uh, the most popular SVS speaker that we currently uh, offer, and that's our prime elevation. Um, oh, and looks like Larry's trying to get us a shot there. So basically, this is a, uh, a speaker that we designed um, mostly for Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and, and height effects. It's got an angled front baffle. It's got a bracket on the back, which allows you to easily mount it to a wall or the ceiling. And uh, basically, you know, with the angled front baffle, it gives you direct radiating height of so instead of having that sort of ceiling bounce approach for some of those toppers that uh, go on top of a tower speaker and, and sort of beam the sound off the ceiling. And then theoretically, it's supposed to hit the ceiling and bounce back to your ears and convince you you're hearing sound from overhead. We actually took the approach of making an angled front baffle that would just direct radiate the sound right to your listening area. And the question that these of uh, these folks are asking is whether it can be put on its side. And the answer is absolutely. The way the bracket's set up, you can put it on, uh, you know, mount it on its side, and whether it's angled sort of in front of you and towards the listening area or behind you towards the listening area, it provides just a uh, very versatile surround speaker solution. And, uh, you know, it's just an option that allows you to deal with imperfect rooms, which I think most people don't have a perfect square, you know, a perfect rectangle to build a home theater. It allows you to put it on, you know, say a post or, uh, you know, a high on a sidewall, wherever it is you need to put that speaker. You know, it can mount there pretty easily. Yeah, the, the elevation is such a cool speaker. And I saw somebody asking about where it can be used. It can be your front. It can be your heights. It can be your surrounds. It can be your sides. It can be your center channel down below a screen kind of coming up into the room. Uh, I've even seen people wire them in parallel, kind of side by side or back to back, however you choose to put it, and do it like a bipole dipole speaker. So, uh, and I see another question there. Can you use fronts as... Um, any speaker or centers as really anything uh you can use a center channel for anything but we typically probably recommend you do a bookshelf or a tower in lieu of a center channel we've had people channel. use the centers as surrounds though even they've taken our uh ultra centers and then put them vertically as surrounds so as long as those tweeters are around your level it's going to be okay it's just the form factor doesn't necessarily fit with most applications yeah, it doesn't make sense in that yeah. kind of situation yeah. but, so um, just recently earlier this week on uh shared a um, home theater tour of a gentleman that's in the chat and he had a question um, he's got the prime elevations and he said he wasn't aware of the trade-in option like how does that work so, so typically wants to trade in something yeah you would have to uh, buy direct from the svs website and uh typically it's a year and if you save your original packaging it's going to save you some money because otherwise we're gonna have to send you packaging um, you will pay shipping to have it returned uh but you know we'll give you either full credit or partial credit, depending on the condition of the, the speakers towards the purchase of the next model up. And uh, again, even folks who have had their product for over a year, 
we'll try to work with you. You know, say you've had a PB16 or, well, probably you wouldn't upgrade. <laughs> it's like, yeah. where are we you going have there? A PB That's a hint. 2000 Pro <laughs> and you want to upgrade to a 3000 or a 16 or whatever, um, you know, we'll uh, basically allow you and, and figure out what we can do. Even if it's after that year long period, it's just part of, uh, you know, again, that aspiration and, and trying to make the best out of people's systems. Um, so yeah, it's uh, save your packaging. I will say if you if you have a notion that you might actually trade up, uh, but other than that, we just try to make it as easy as possible. See, Nick, I'm reading a lot into this little interview here Ooh. because like he's like you upgrade to, from the PB16. Yeah. We got great things coming in 2021. So you know what's funny? Know, like, so many people like there. There's so many people who are like, oh, when are you going to do that dual 32, or when are you going to yeah. make that 20 inch? When are you gonna, and it's like. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to like besmirch those people who love just that massive subwoofer, but the, the, you know, as a marketing person, the market yeah. for that isn't as sure. big as really let's say a 12 inch subwoofer. 100%. So, you know, we want to make products that are going to surprise and delight people, but a good yeah. amount of people, not just like the, the serious hardcore people who are like, you guys made the best subwoofer in the history of man and you sold five. Of them. And it's like, Oh, that's good, but it's not great for, for business. So yeah. uh, we love you guys. We'll get there. But don't hold your breath on a PB32. <laughs> PB32. And I just saw that question you just threw up from a horsepower junkie about the mount. So this is the mount for the elevation. And I was I put it up while Nick was talking. It doesn't go in front of the port at all. It's actually below the port. And what the mount allows you to do, you can see these keyholes here. Depending on which way the speaker needs to face, this goes on the wall. And the port, I, I wish I had one down, but it's up there on my wall. Um, the port is designed to be against the wall and use the wall for resonance and it doesn't really add anything or take anything away from the sound it's because the cabinet is large and if you look at an in ceiling there you go if you look at an in ceiling or in wall speaker that's in this price range say 200 each it's going to be a speaker you're crossing over about 150 or 200 hertz and so it's not a very capable speaker it's really more for background and that's really about it these guys at 400 for the pair you can cross them over at 80 or 100 hertz use them as front center surrounds heights you name it put them on your ceilings put them on your walls uh put them on stands they're great tabletop speak perfect timing uh they're great to like go on that. a tabletop like for music um like i had a buddy of mine that works in uh, florida and he was calling me wanting to do a, a tabletop system with a sound base amplifier so i recommended he do the sound base with a pair of elevations uh, on his desk because then it kind of comes up not only directly at you for two channel listening but as you see there uh, for a great room filling experience as well. Yeah. And, and I, I think part of the reason it's become our most popular model is it's very neutral as well. You know, we tried to make it accurate, neutral. So obviously people are mixing this with brands from other speakers who are doing maybe those toppers, you know, ceiling bounce, which just isn't quite as convincing. And, uh, you know, I think that's helped it become so popular as a, a Dolby Atmos height effect speaker. Uh, the sense that it is very neutral and it can sort of blend with, with most speaker systems. You know, I, I, I love those things. So, you know, I'd buy more, but I don't need any more. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody asked if they could do it like an 11 channel system with all yeah. the prime elevations. I mean, you could, you Absolutely. absolutely could, if you truly desired that, you know, uh, so, you know, if, if that's your role, then, then go for it, get a nice sub to go with that to get those, uh, you know, 30 Hertz and below notes but yeah and that, why would, not? that would be a huge step up over like these small satellite sub combos i mean like massive improvement you know what i'm saying over the the real tiny ones yeah so, the little plastic home theater box yeah. yeah you know i mean just huge and for the value that you're getting for 400 bucks for the pair that's yeah. pretty sweet yeah and i think as an upgrade path you know you can start with those even as like fronts and surrounds and then maybe you them to just be height effects if you get a pair of bookshelves or towers um you know so there's it gives you a lot of versatility i think you know for down the road if you are going to have that uh that upgrade path where you know you need to start maybe a little smaller and then build up to something a little bit more you know uh hardcore with, with uh, bigger speakers and, and more output that's a great question from adam you want to address that would you I, say mounting I, elevation I, on ceiling are better than in ceiling options well, I, I think the, the easy answer could be a couple different routes, but uh, I'd say yes for a couple reasons. One, uh, if you can, once your wire's in place, mounting the elevations is as simple as putting in those four screws. That's it. 
And if you look at what it takes to install an in ceiling option, you're talking back boxes in some cases, cutting massive holes in your ceilings. And that's something that doesn't go with you when you move. Uh, you typically leave that behind. Sure. Uh, the elevation, if you compare to all the other $400 pairs of in ceiling speakers, it's really, there's really not much out there that's going to sound like that. Um, I've listened to a bunch of in ceiling and in wall speakers, and to get something, and being in a retail store where the guys are talking to me as well. You know, we're talking uh, 800 900 dollars a piece to get some of the frequency capabilities that these are uh, able to do at four hundred dollars for the pair. Plus, this includes the, whoa the mounting hardware. It can go on a wall. It can go on a ceiling, and because of the flexibility, we we call it the world's most versatile speaker because it really can go anywhere. Larry, and, I was just going to ask a quick question on that. As far as mounting, you know, typically something, especially on the ceiling, you want to make sure that gets on a stud, but um, how do you kind of, what, what recommendations to safely mount that to your ceiling do you recommend? Well, they have a special get, ceiling mount, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So I've got it right here too. So uh, when you get the mount, this is what it looks, so it goes in keyhole style. So it's kind of locked in place there. I'm trying to get some light. Uh, so you can see that, but yep. this piece comes with it. This is our ceiling lock and it just literally goes right over it and prevents the keyhole from shifting. So if you put it on the ceiling, what it does is it locks it in place. You can see there, now I've got it installed right yep. the, where mm -hmm. nothing's moving. So you don't have to yep. worry about a nine pound speaker falling on your head. Um, but it it's a, because it's directional, it is going to give you more capability than an in ceiling speaker that's typically firing down. Even if it has an angled tweeter or whatever, you're, you're going to get more separation, more blending between your front and rear speakers, more of that immersive bubble. If you go to movie theater, speakers aren't built into the ceilings and the walls. Right. Their boxes hanging right. on the walls, hanging on the ceiling. And then just when to you add on to what you said, if you are going on the ceiling, you definitely want to have at least two of those screws in the bracket into a stud. Good. Yeah, you yes. don't like the drywall right. anchors are fine if you're using it on a sidewall. Um, but if you're going into the ceiling, make sure you get at least two of those screws into the stud because you know, that bracket will the little insert will keep the speaker from coming loose but the bracket could always rip your drywall depending on how uh how that thick was, it is that was my biggest concern because last thing you want is a you know a ceiling speaker landing on somebody's head you yeah, and like, me both kind of ruins, kind of ruins the movie makes it more yeah. impactful though that's for sure. <laughs> definitely <laughs> more impactful <laughs> yes yeah, a helicopter was flying that. over me and got i got hit in the head Drop the bomb. <laughs> <Literally. laughs> um Hey, does for that trade-in program? Does it work for speakers that have been in some kind of fire or anything? Like <laughs> 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 you know what? If we're now, we'll give you a fair trade-in value. Fair trade. Depending on how much melting has happened, but yeah, if they work, I, we'll, we'll figure out a way to take care of you. you That's what we always that. say. You need to put SPS that. In. We'll always SPS figure out a way to take care of you. Yeah. Put that in the SVS museum. That'll be worth money. Museum. Mm -hmm. SVS museum. <laughs> Oh man. Um, so, so as far as, as the difference between the, um, in ceiling and the, uh, little, the prime elevations, um, won't you get a better sound because, uh, like if those in ceilings don't have a back box and, and in that price range, they don't come with like a backing box, do they? No, not typically. Um, normally, you know, they, I got to watch what I say here, but uh, normally if you're in a particular price point, um, they're all very similar and, you know, there's not a ton of difference. And that's part of why we went this route is it's very different from everything else that's out there. Um, you know, the, the builder grade stuff that you get when you buy a house, that's very similar to other products that are in the price points there. And we're not shooting for that. We want the experience, whether you're buying our $2,000 a pair ultra towers or, mm -hmm. you know, $35 satellite, which I hate calling a satellite because it's still a nine pound bookshelf speaker or, you know, the ultra, I'm sorry, the prime elevations, whatever. Uh, the experience, we want you to have a great experience from all of them. And, you know, if you're buying a in ceiling or in wall speaker, uh, just because, you know, it's price point, then you're missing out. And that's not what we want so anybody to feel like. Shout out to spec of tech, fellow YouTube reviewer. He asks, uh, will you take an elevation speaker that has a little head blood on it for trading? <laughs> we for prefer trading? that you clean the DNA off uh, before it comes yeah. back. But, yeah. uh, and you, you have know, the box. If we don't know any yeah. better, we're not going to say no. Yeah, right. and if it's the if it's the black gloss, uh, it'd probably wipe off pretty easy. The white gloss might get stained. Yeah. Or uh, if, it's, if yeah. it's part of a police investigation, we also don't want it back. So. No. Yeah. 
No. There it is. And that's why you buy SVS because you get to interact with the Larry and a Nick. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> One of us. That's terrible, man. Uh, <laughs> it's good. I think it's going to stick. I think so. <laughs> I can only hope. Oh, man. That's hilarious. Hey, you guys stick around. Um, we're going to ask you to be part of the VIP area over here, private VIP chat. So I'm going to give you a link to that. If you are not already able to access that, you can still buy a ticket to go and talk to these guys in the private VIP chat. So, um, yeah, we're up yeah. on an hour just right now. Yeah, Always yeah. Pleasure having you guys on here, man. Thank you guys well, so much. I, I got to say, you you guys are truly like some of the hardest working people in our industry, and I'm not blowing smoke right now. I know how much goes into putting this show together, and I know a lot of folks out there are missing these hi-fi shows. So kudos to what you guys are doing. We're so happy to be just a part of it and, uh, you know, have some fun. You know, we're not here to lecture you about what your system needs to be, but we had fun and, and keep it up what you guys are doing because it's making a big difference. And I think a lot of people want this knowledge now. They, they're out there cool. they're building their systems yeah. at home, they're stuck at home. So kudos to you guys and thank you for, uh, for doing what you're doing. Appreciate it. Hey, right. Thank you for that. You're and I, I always recommend SVS because, mm -hmm. as Daryl's saying here, best customer support on the market. Yep. Look, yep. if these guys are willing to yep. interact and have fun, you don't think that they're going to uh, respond if you have an issue with your with your product. They definitely will. So yep. this just proves that. Mm -hmm. We'll find yeah. out a way yeah. to take care of you. And shout out to Ed Mullen, the head of our customer service. He is a legend, and I will always refer to him as a legend whenever I refer to him because he's been around so long, and he just does a, such a great job. So thank you for all the comments that are uh, giving props to them. It's not something we take for granted at all. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Enjoy this. Get all these in here. Take us out, Chana. All right, ladies and gentlemen, day four, the Hi-Fi Summit continues at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I believe. So we've got a three-hour break. That is a healthy, healthy break. Uh, if you guys need to get some lunch yeah, and all nap. that stuff, a nap. <laughs> I actually have to finish my song that I'm supposed to debut tonight at the hey, after hey. party. So I, I got to get it off that computer and get it over into uh, my DJ deck. So I got a little time for that. And of course, uh, the Larry and a Nick will be in the <laughs> video chat. So we'll see you guys there. Thanks again, fellas. And uh, we'll see everybody yeah. in just a few. Thanks, Bye, guys. Everybody.